Happy Monday and welcome to an all new episode of The Stew. We love you guys so much. We gotta thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Anika. I'm Les. And I'm Janae. And we have so much to talk about. First and foremost is carnival season. It is almost right upon us and the government has decided that budget costs, or budgets rather, will be cut. Slash. You need cut. to cut it. Slash. Cut I don't know why they didn't. And I won't lie, I that. am kind of excited. Yeah. I mean, Carnival has ago. been fun and all, and I've enjoyed my time. But, you know, we've seen from the last two Carnivals that we have not been successful in making the money back that was put in. And, you know, a lot of people had their two cents to say about um, what the money could have been spent mm -hmm. on, whether of that's course. education or Junkanoo. And so I am just thrilled about this news, you know, cut back a little bit. And let's see if we actually can make money before we start pouring all of our resources yeah, into well, it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the news. Yeah, it's no secret that at the end of the day, the money can be spent elsewhere on better causes, right? Yeah, um, yeah. As with any business, they're not going to see any money coming from it for 10, yeah, for a, I mean, for a, a long, long while. time. Yeah. It, so it's just, uh, I wonder what the calculations were in terms of cost-benefit analysis. What are, what could the money have been used on mm -hmm. that could have kind of given us a little bit more traction than Carnival? I, I get the idea of Carnival, I get why, mm -hmm. right? But uh, also, you know, culturally, um, it, it, does it affect us? You know, there's other things that are kind of, yeah. we're getting back, this causing backlash. Well, from much. the moment that they announced they were going to do Junkanoo Carnival, as we all know, everyone was saying that the money should have gone to Junkanoo mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So that's yeah. one instance, yeah. one area where it could have gone. But what I found interesting about the story as well, Minister of Tourism, O.B. Wilshkum, had also mentioned that it's time for the private sector to take it over. And as I was reading the article, I thought to myself, do we have enough interest? Yeah, well, I do know that there were various, um, not parties, what were they called? Um, groups. Groups, uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. Good doll, I didn't participate, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there were different groups yeah. that were a part of Junkanoo Carnival. I wonder if anyone is that much concerned to say, okay, yes, let's take this over from government and mm. keep this going it's for years weird, to though, come. Okay. Because isn't Junkanoo supposed to be a, a private sector also, I, I thought that Junkanoo Carnival would be kind of the government's way to, of course, make some money. Mm -hmm. But Junkanoo was more le was led more so by the private sector or the Junkanoo groups themselves, okay. right? Because they don't want really the government to influence or to have anything to say in terms of how they operate their groups. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that you're saying that or they're saying that, you know, we want the private sector to take it over. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. weird. And ladies, on another local note... <laughs> It's like a little tongue twister saying that <laughs> we have new constituencies, uh, Barnabas, St. Barnabas and Freetown. Freetown, I understand, is supposed to reflect the ancestral history of that particular constituency, uh, which was Montague. Okay. And St. Barnabas is, you know, somewhere in that Mount Moriah area. But... What's the yeah. point again when they when they do all these zones splits and changes for for? I think the intention is to help the governing party get more seats. More seats. Yeah, okay. so okay. they switch it up as need be. So if one mm. particular area in the last election they might have lost or something, mm. then they I think switch things around. Okay. To oh, that's something. interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, because I, I did see a comment on Facebook recently where someone in Mount Moriah says, you know, I hate this. Every yeah. election, yeah. I don't know what constituency am, right? I'm in because they keep switching the lines. Like, can I just choose the one person who was actually impacting, yeah. you know, my yeah. environment and my you know constituency? What? To me, it's like jumping in and out listen, of relationships. It's like, give me a break. I think <laughs> it's one of those things, too, where I think we should just have it be fixed. Like, fixed yeah. terms, mm -hmm. term limits for yeah. our politicians and prime minister, fixed constituency. Constituencies. Why not? Exactly. Let the roads be our guide. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. So we're talking move about on. jumping in and out <laughs> of things. Norwegian has jumped out of mm. the Bahamas. Mm. In big news Fowling. last week. 
it was announced <laughs> um, uh, in the local news that Norwegian Cruise, cruise Line, line yeah. has opted to come out of uh, the Bahamas completely in favor of Cuba. Well, just Nassau and Freeport, honey. Well, that's right. You're yeah, right. Nassau they are and Freeport. Because they, they do have their own private yes. island. Oh. Which, yes. I mean... Uh, it doesn't really benefit us. And potatoes, right. the potatoes, point. potatoes right. it's, their, it's their private island, right? right? Yeah. You, I, you can't even call yeah. that ours. No, the yeah. money is going back to them. it's their own. Exactly. Right. Wow. So let's talk yeah. about local vendors local people that will be affected because they're not coming to yeah. Nassau. Our, yeah, they're not well, coming to Nassau or something. Freeport. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that that has happened, but I hope that this pushes us in the direction of, you know, creative sustenance and education reform. We are way too dependent mm -hmm. on industries such as this. So when a cruise line or other entities decides to pack their bags and go elsewhere, instead of being stuck in a boat, you can have other industries that yes. can sustain our mm -hmm. economy. Norwegian is now going to Cuba. And instead of what they were doing previously, they were coming to Nassau and Freeport for those day trips. So, mm -hmm. you know, you come in at about seven, eight o'clock and you mm -hmm. leave around three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Cuba, however, they will now be sailing in that morning and, and not, not leaving until, until the until next, the next day. Wow. day in the afternoon. So they're giving their passengers an opportunity to not only experience day excursions, but they get to soak up some of that rich culture. Yeah, and mm -hmm. nightlife. And, and nightlife all that. that Cuba has. And I can tell you, Cuba, I've been there, that it is a fascinating place. Mm -hmm. Their nightlife life is rich in mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. each of the hotels have you know like little uh, uh shows that go on almost like vegas yep. you know there's always a, a bar lounge a piano yep. lounge or something that I you see can that go to us it's too, awesome. to 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 enhance our cultural experiences yes. yeah. why in the world is bay street shut down after 10 p.m if you say that tourism diversify. is going to be the name of the game. Yeah, yeah. Right? If, you're gonna, if it's going to yeah. be your number one industry, it yeah. means that yeah. it has to be There's rich. Listen, the, the bottom line is we need a lot of self reflection. Our government yeah. and us as a people, we need to get serious and start to rethink and revamp yeah. the way that we do things. Yeah. But mm -hmm. talking about culture and nightlife and entertainment, mm -hmm. the, what is she, the queen, the godmother, <laughs> the, the legend, the icon, and Aretha Nana. Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of that. She is. She's going to be retiring at the end of this year. Score girl. Ladies, I found out something so interesting about her. She has put out 93 albums throughout her career. She's putting out wow. one more later on this uh, this year, around fall, I believe it is. But after that, she's going to to give up the mic. Get a girl. You Incredible. have paid your dues, honey. You have been great to us. Take rest. Yes. Be a lady of leisure. First right. lady inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I love it. Nice. Awesome. I love it. She I, mean, I doubt she will retire. I mean, la ladies like that don't really retire. Yeah. I mean, they'll probably she'll take vacation like Obama, but she'll be performing <laughs> in some sort we'll of like see her somewhere. Yeah, right? you know, yeah. some Caribbean <laughs> island. She'll be there and she'll have like <laughs> weekends uh, where she performs. You know, <laughs> not a full retirement. Yes, so no, but come to the Bahamas and perform for us. Yes, yes. girl. Love that yes. girl. Yes. girl. Yes. Yes. Speaking of ladies of leisure, and I just want to move over into ladies in their older age. This is why it might be inappropriate to ask a woman or guess a woman age. A video went viral online. This news reporter wanted to interview this young lady, and she says this woman has been living in this neighborhood for 80 years. Mm. And in turn, the young lady says, <gasps> I'm not 80. Get it right, Hunter. And she yeah. says, oh, 75. And she's like, I ain't 75. Oh, no. And if I was that reporter, I don't care if I was standing on concrete, I would have to find a drill and just <laughs> dig a hole in it and just get lost <laughs> under, like, just go, just go away. Oh, just wow. bury yourself. Yeah, but is, was this learned. a male reporter then? Female, a female yeah. reporter. Oh, you with would a think female. she would know better with a yeah, female. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. we all know you never ask a woman's age, but men struggle with that. They really want to guess. Yeah, what's yeah. going on with her? And it's like well, rule you know, of the guys. day: yeah. never assume a woman's age. It is mm. quite offensive. It's also offensive to ask her her age. Just don't do it. Is just, it? Just avoid it. I mean, I, you really got to yeah. feel your person out, right? There's definitely yeah. been times where you have a conversation. It's like, oh my gosh, you know. I, how how old are you? You really look young, and you'd be like, oh, thanks. I mean, and then wow. and then you give the opportunity for them to lie. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> but um, you know, you gotta really feel your audience out, and definitely yeah. TV is not the time. She would have done better, the reporter, that, to just uh, instead of assuming that the lady had been in that neighborhood for eighty years, she should have just asked her how mm -hmm. long have you been in this exactly. neighborhood yeah. which go. wasn't her a asking her her age listen i there stay clear go. of it all the time if you yeah. tell me your age sure but i ain't trying to get myself shame child don't i <laughs> i don't want no unless you bring it up i'm sorry
That's right. Yeah. So, in kind of on the same topic in the same line, um, one thing that uh, you know we talk about sometimes is Bahamian women dating mm -hmm. foreigners, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, my question to you. I'll go to Les, because, you know, we're still hunting for a nice little sugar daddy for Les. So, Les, have you or would you consider dating a non-Bahamian? Yes, and I have. Yes. You have? Mm -hmm. And tell us what that experience was like. It was like dating a man. Oh. <laughs> Not a she man, <laughs> not a hair it man. It was not a half a man. It mm. was dating a, a another human. So you felt like there was being. no difference. But how do you feel? I mean, because I, I mean, I bring it up because yeah. a lot of times women or Bahamians in general will think you've uh, uh, abandoned yes. your yes. own kind yeah. when you've decided to date someone of another yeah. race, another mm. ethnicity, yeah. another. No, I, I mean, get all it. of that. I, I, I totally get it. I understand all of that. I just think it's an issue if you, as an individual, you are actually abandoning your own race or culture as or nationality. Like a right, thing. Nationality. Yeah, nationality. Yeah, a thing. Then, yeah. yeah, that's a problem. Right. No, for me, it was, it was fine. Now, granted, when two cultures or two races collide, there are, of course, are going to be differences. There will be challenges, especially in getting to know one another and getting accustomed to what that person likes simply because of who they are. It opens you up to so much more. You it can does. learn about their culture. Exactly. You can learn about their customs, their families, their values, and things yeah. like that. So, and then travel to where they're from. Yeah, no, right. definitely. You know, there's a benefit in that yeah, too. No, so. for sure. Whatever floats oh, your sure. boat, man. Yeah. Well, that's, you Dude, heard you that. Boo. Whatever floats your boat, and Les is open to them all. Yes. So after the break, <laughs> we will be talking to a le local, another local legend who's paving the way in <laughs> filmmaking at this very moment. We've got him after the break. Stay tuned and don't go away. <laughs> And we're back with the stew on a Man Crush Monday. And today we are celebrating along with our crush in a mighty big way as he is doing huge things in one of my favorite pastimes, filmmaking and movies. We have the local legendary, if I dare say, Kareem Mortimer, <laughs> who is here to talk about his upcoming film, Cargo, which will be premiering in Miami in a few weeks. Yes, yes, yes. March 5th. And this is also a, an extension of the short film Passage, which premiered years ago. Yes. Right. Okay. So for anyone out there that doesn't know or may already be familiar with Kareem, he has been filmmaking for the greater part of a decade now. Tell us, first of all, about your journey, how you came to this point, how it's transformed you before we get into the movie itself. Uh, no problem. So I've, I've always wanted to make films. Like, I don't know like how it happened. I used to watch a lot of movies with my paternal grandmother and that's how we bonded. And so like movies were such a big part of our lives and, and, that's, and so I, I wanted to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And so when I was 17 years old, I, I moved to Miami. My, my parents supported me. My mom wanted to support my dreams and I went to film school and I never looked back. Wow. Nice, yeah. yeah. The thing is though, you started with a lot of short films. I know back in the day, um, but you've got a, a repertoire now over all of these years, Children of God, uh, Passage, Windjammers, mm -hmm. Float. I mean, the list is <laughs> a little extensive now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's But yeah, short films were your thing at first and mm -hmm. then you decided to get into the feature films. So I started um, working in documentaries ah. and I, I worked with uh, Maria Govan on a, one or two projects as an editor and a producer. Okay. And then I wanted to tell my own story. So I did start making, as a director, short right. films. Okay. That's how I started and that led into uh, Children of God, which was my first feature yes. that took me to Windjammers, that. which was... Yeah. Uh, a co-direction, mm -hmm. and then my second feature is writer director, which is Cargo. Uh, yeah. yeah. So how do you go about casting for your films, your short stories, your documentaries? Who, how do you bring these? Who do you look for in bringing your characters to life? Casting is the most difficult part of the process for me. 
uh, <laughs> as a director because I meet amazing people mm. and I meet amazing actors and you have this role that you that's very uh, definitive and like mm. someone could come in and be really great but it just doesn't match right. the thing and so right. it's just really hard it's just a really heartbreaking <laughs> moment mm -hmm. <laughs> for me um, but sometimes you see someone come in and you're like, oh, God, that is the person and, oh. and that's magic. But that's very rare that oh, that wow. happens. Wow. So you but, get a lot of work in progress. <laughs> well, no, everyone's really talented. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that he has such a taxi brain. <laughs> you know, everyone's great. You know, but, you know. but it's a difficult part of the process. And you see so many people by the end of the day, you forget. And like, uh, yeah. And so you, you cast a wide net and then you whittle it down and you whittle it down. Okay. Cargo was a little bit different because we went after some names. And so we approach agents to see who would be interested okay. in that part, especially for some of the leads. Nice. Yeah. nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, we've seen photos and some highlights from the film festival over at the Island House. Oh, yes. Which looked like it was so incredible. And I love that there were workshops. Tell us a little bit more about your initiatives there. So I am the curator for the cinema at the Island House. Mm -hmm. So I pick all the movies and come up with the programs. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also, as an extension of that, we, I'm, a, I'm a board member of the Island House Film Festival, which had its inaugural year this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And part of what we wanted to do is, like, I grew up in a time in the Bahamas where, um, you know, there was one movie theater, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it was R&D. Yeah. And, and we didn't, <laughs> yeah. like, so the, everything is about possibility, mm -hmm. yeah. what's possible. And there was not a lot of things that were um, possible for me if I yeah. didn't have the parents that I had who had yeah. dreams of their own of being artists in their own right. Yeah. Um, and so, in going into the festival, it's like, what can we offer the right. community to mm -hmm. bring them in and take advantage? And, um, and then how do we make it free? Yeah. So we came up with free yeah, programs awesome. uh, for people to come and, and, yeah. and spark some inspiration that they can even go further than, than we're going, you know? Mm -hmm. so, that is yeah. incredible. Awesome. So cargo, right? Cargo, yes. yes. <laughs> the, that is the, uh, the the theme of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What can you share about the film? So cargo, I'll just give you the brief synopsis. So cargo is a story of a sensitive Bahamian fisherman who transforms into a prolific human smuggler in order to uh, pay off some debts and take care of his family, mm -hmm. and uh, and and the relationship with his um with his with his girl with his girlfriend on the side, mm -hmm. who is uh, who is also uh, an, an an undocumented Haitian woman living in the Bahamas. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice, yeah. And I remember when I had an opportunity to see Passage, the short film, which you know, as we mentioned earlier. Um, was the first part to this. So what was the the process like for you in terms of going from that short film to putting this all together and getting that story, you know, expanded on? Well, it's interesting. So I wrote the feature before I made the short, oh, which is which is really cool. And so I, um, so the, the, sh the short was 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 commissioned by uh, by uh, the Commonwealth Foundation in the UK. Okay. Wow. And they uh, they gave us um, they gave us the funds in order to make the movie. Right. And they was like, this will help you with your feature. Wow. And it did. And, and so, so Passage is different in a way that it just focuses on um, uh, this young Haitian woman and her right. little brother on, on the, the way, ship. on yeah. the ship. Mm -hmm. And yep. so Cargo, <laughs> like, so, so Passage is like this and Cargo is yeah, talks about a the wider issue. Okay. And a lot more issues are going like Good race. Cultural identity, um, immigration. Mm -hmm. and wow! Those things. So I am certainly hoping, Kareem, that the Miami Film Festival won't be the only place that we're going to get a chance to see Cargo. Uh, what else is happening with Cargo? When's it coming here? Uh, How are we going to see of it? Of course not. So we'll bring Cargo <laughs> here towards the end of this year okay. and, and have wow. a big event. And nice. I want everyone to have opportunity to see it, even if I have to go into a park and project it on a wall. <laughs> on a big screen. Um, yeah, yeah okay. of course, it'll be at the Island House at some point. Of course, um, yeah. we hopefully, we can get it into other theaters here, like the yeah. Galleria. Wow. Um, yeah. You know. I'm that sure. is amazing. You've been, you're, you're walking into your purpose too. What's it been like? You know, all these years developing such great work and and just pouring yourself into your craft. You know, I, it was it's so interesting. Like I was in Ireland um, two months ago working on a on a commercial, and I I was talking to the to the uh, art director of of the ad agency, and um, and I was just like, oh man, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. And he's like, Kareem, have you ever like talked to your fifteen year old self? And he was like, because when you're an artist, you're just like in front and you're just chiseling away yeah. and you're just chiseling away. Yeah. But you don't realize that there's people behind you 
and there's no and you have no perspective and he's like go back to your 15 year old self yeah. and ask him what he wanted and i went back to my 15 year old self nice. and i was like <laughs> but i wanted <laughs> literally this is what i wanted i wanted yeah. i wanted um <laughs> I wanted to like work in a movie theater and what? watch movies anytime I want. Like I wanted it. to like, uh, you know, be friends with filmmakers from around wow. the world. I wanted to tell stories, and I wanted nice. my own refrigerator. I want to hug you. Wow! So I think everybody should do that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Let's Good talk about the industry at large. Mm, yes. Where do you now see the industry going? Where do you see yourself in the industry locally and internationally? What's uh, What's the next step? So the next step, I, you know, when I first started, it was basically two filmmakers, like really doing it every day. Mm -hmm. um, the, and there was Maria and myself and, you know, yeah. and there was Charlie and Philip also making films as well. Mm -hmm. And now there are so many filmmakers that are doing such great work, you know, and, and that's really inspiring to see. And, and, and now it's more affordable than ever mm -hmm. for Bahamians to tell their stories on a really quality level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I see it going leaps and, and bounds. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to still be working, making films. I think mm -hmm. my next film uh, won't take place in the Bahamas, but I will be here and I will remain right. here right. as a Bahamian. Yeah. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's why I see me telling global stories yeah. is, is yeah. what's next for me. Just, just one request when you do do that film abroad, mm -hmm. make sure you have some touch of the islands in there somehow. Of course. You know, even if it's like someone, I don't know, craving for some conch salad yeah. or, you know, just give a shout out to us here in the 242. Yeah, or be an actor <laughs> from the Bahamas that's yeah. there. Or like, you know, that's the lens yeah. from where I see life through. So, exactly. Yeah, that makes yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kareem, for coming on the stew and talking to us about Cargo, um, yeah, premiering at the Miami Film Festival, is it? March yep. 5th? March 5th. Um, we're nice. definitely looking forward to seeing it come here and, you know, the local support that it's going to draw. So thank you for coming on the stew, talking to us. And uh, shall we look for you on social media? Yeah, look, at, I'm just, I'm on Facebook. It's mm -hmm. Kareem Autumnore. <laughs> yeah, so if you're looking to be cast in his nest film, just friend him on Facebook. <laughs> we will be back right after the break. <laughs> It's your fab frugal tip on this marvelous Monday. Now, if you went to school 10 years ago, you definitely wouldn't have taken any courses for these jobs. Today, we're talking about jobs that barely existed 10 years ago. First is the iOS developer. Now, Apple announced the iPhone in 2007, and then third-party development took off in 2008 when people can build apps around iOS. Now, that's a job I should have gotten into. The second most popular job, and no surprise, on the heels of the iOS developer is the Android developer. So Google came out with their Android in 2007, which also created a craze for Android development apps. Now, can you imagine how many Android developers there were in 10 years ago? There were 53. And how many are there now? Over 10,000 Android developers on LinkedIn at the moment. Can you believe it? So the third most popular job that has come out of LinkedIn is the Zumba instructor. Now Zumba has kind of been all the craze as fitness centers have popped up all over the world. And let's say there were 16 10 years ago, there's now over 6,000 Zumba instructors on LinkedIn at the moment. So the fourth most popular job that kind of popped out in the last 10 years was the social media specialist and intern. Yes, so Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of these great platforms came out between 2003 and 2006 and hit a peak around 2008 where these jobs just skyrocketed. So now if you want to be a social media specialist, well, hey, you just need the right tools to get with it, take great photos, all that amazing things. Anika knows a lot more than I do but it's definitely one of those jobs that have come out of nowhere from 10 years ago. If you're looking for a job in 2017, look between the lines, find a need and see if you can fulfill it based on a job that you can create. 
This is what these guys did. They focused on technology because, of course, technology has been the biggest growth factor in the past nine, ten years in our lives. But there's also other means of growth in our economy specifically. So you can find a job. You can make it good. You can make this year great. This has been your Fab Frugal Tip of the Week. It's a marvelous Monday. Have a great day. Make it productive. And I'll see you after the break. On this marvelous Man Crush Monday, we've had such a great time. Thank you once again, Kareem Mortimer, for taking the time to swing on by and talk to us about pa uh, cargo, <laughs> pardon me. I'm sure the festival in Miami is going to be a huge success, and we can't wait to see it here in the Bahamas as well. And ladies, I loved all that talk we had earlier <laughs> about, you know, dating the man from another country mm -hmm. and silly season, you know, all the stuff that we can here on this too. It's been yeah. fun. Yes, it has mm. been. Girl. Good week to you start. Know what, ladies, Good way to start the week. I have a gift for the both of you uh, because it is the month of love. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I want to express my love to oh, you. Oh, that's gift just for you lovely, too. folks. You get long stem, not even yes. short. Long stem. You know, cut. Man, wait. Yes. Happy Love Day, people. Yes. yes. So, tomorrow, <laughs> please enjoy Day. your Valentine's Day. Enjoy. Don't get too upset if he didn't get you what you wanted because you got to communicate. He exactly. can't read your mind. He can't yes. read your mind. <laughs> and if he ain't call you back right away, move on. He's just not you that into you. Cut exactly. it. We'll you got to We'll see you next it. time on this stew. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> is right